Doing what I feel with no regrets Constantly forgiving, but I'm never gonna forget Always keeping my composure, I won't let them see me sweat The only thing that really matters is the power and respect in this world I won't make the same mistakes from all the lessons I learned Ain't no coping, no emotions for them bridges I burned Must have been forcing my hand, certain shit I probably... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, we go keep it. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Worst countdown. We back live with the Mac Five. We in the building. Back you know what live saying? with the Mac Five for sure with the bros. Oh, hey, man. I got bars right now. You do, up, bro. Put a beat on real quick. Come on, yeah, freestyle. Not for real though. Uh, in here chilling with the bros. You know what I'm saying? We actually got we got Austin in the building. I said actually, like you're not always here. We got Austin in the building. We got That's Jordan good. in the building. Yo. We got Lake in the building. Yo, yo. And we got Lance, a.k.a. Six Man in the building. Six. So, six. Six. Do you want to be, like, just permanently referred to as Six? six. Nah, we nah, not, y'all we not doing nah. that. Y'all, I, I don't mean to, like, jump in, but, like, you know, outside this house, Jordan go by JB, but as you Other than know, that, we, I don't even want y'all calling call me call Six. call this nigga JB no. at all. I'm Man, sorry. I'll be calling my life. Jordan my all whole his life. life. So it is what it is. It's his initials, middle, first and middle initial, but he Jordan to us, so that's what y'all going to get from the podcast. But for those of y'all who do know him outside the fam, that's JB for y'all, so... Um, y'all probably see it when I put his name in the description with his uh his Twitter and Instagram names and all that. But when y'all hear us refer to him, we call him Jordan. Yep. And for Lance, it's gonna be the same thing. He may be six man of y'all, but he Lance to us. You feel me? Lance. So I'm cool that's with where that. We at with he that. said what he said. I said what I said. That's a fact. Y'all go stream that. All available on all streaming platforms. Still, you feel me? But uh, so what we're going to get into today is actually something we had a, a discussion about as far as like whether we were actually going to um, talk about this on the podcast or not. Um, and what we're referring to is Black History Month. And I don't want y'all to get all up in arms. You know, we we obviously we honor Black History Month. We appreciate, you know, all those who came um, in previous generations to help us live the way we're living now and, you know, reap the benefits of their hard work. And we appreciate Black History Month. But the reason why we're wanting to, you know, what, what we were having to, a debate about whether we wanted to talk about it or not is because, you know, for us, and actually at the beginning of the month, month I heard LeBron say something like dope. Um, he was getting an interview after a game or something like that. And he was asked a question about Black History Month. He was like, it, I mean, we celebrate black history every day. Like, every day. It's a movement for us. It ain't, it ain't just no monthly thing where we just, you know, celebrate black history for one month and then, you know, we move on with our lives. And although that ain't something that, you know, we're foreign to, I haven't actually, like, heard it, like, verbalized, like, out in the open as far as, you know, that's something we celebrate year-round. You may heard, like, cliches or something related to that, but, like, just straight direct. At least that's not from what, a polarizing figure. Straight up. I mean, and that's what we do. Like, we don't have to... You know, we don't have to limit it to a month. We 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 talk about Black History every day. Um, for those of y'all who continue listening to us, y'all gonna hear us talk about Black History, Black culture, uh, what it means to be Black, and all that throughout. You know, the podcast. So if you don't like it, don't you, watch. I mean, you gonna like it because it's, it's it's real. You feel me? So we had a debate about whether we were actually going to talk about Black History Month because we're not just trying to limit ourselves to the shortest month that society gave us. Right. Um, we going with this, you know, with, from the start of the podcast through however long and however far we take this. Like, you know, we're, we honor Black History. We're a part of Black History. And we're not limited to 28 days, 29 on a leap day. Feel the me? Year. So we 365. 365, 365 for our lives, you feel me? So, that's what we are. Um, shit. But we decided we're going to talk about it. And we're going we gonna to get into black history. And I think the deciding factor in that, uh, who we're going to give credit to for it, is actually Austin. Big dog. Um, he came up with a, a dope idea as far as, like, how we can, like, discuss it. And, you know, as we mentioned, we, we appreciate the Sojourner Truths. We appreciate the Malcolm X's, Martin Luther King's, Madam C.J. Walker's, Walker. George Washington Carver's. Very good, Marshall. Um, all that, man. Man, who? All that. All, George all Washington Carver's. Okay. Yeah, we don't, I mean, we're going to leave X. some out naturally just to move on with the podcast. There's two names to say. All of them. It's a lot. Two to say. So, but we, we honor and appreciate all of their contributions, their movement, um, everything they did to contribute to black culture, black history. 
and everything that you know they did for us to be able to move how we move like with the freedoms that we have our right to vote um and all that but um what Austin brought to our attention which we thought was a good idea to be able to have this podcast was to kind of put a spin on it so to say um and relate it more so to our people and our generation and where we want to go with that so um I'm just gonna have to edit this part out. She threw me off. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> hey, matter of fact, we not gonna no, edit yeah, this shit out. Shout out, mama. Come on, mama. Yeah. I texted. Right. That's my fault. I asked her for my water. Bro, she could have put it outside the door. <laughs> Text you. This is Austin's fault. He has enjoyed that water <laughs> way too much right now. That was good, boy. But nah, um, that shit tap water though. Shit is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I drink tap water, man. I don't know. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm just Wait, saying, like you, you said it like it was like a, you know, saying like, like, advertise the bottle, water. nigga. That shit comes straight out we the grew faucet. Up tap water. Oh, man, we drink water out the hose. Growing feel up, you feel me? Feel me? Gigi, uh, Vanessa, yeah, I know y'all got a steak and body armor. This for y'all. You feel me? That's we why I buy that. We was outside with it. We would be playing outside. Mama lock us out the house. We have to drink out the water, water hose, bro. Just mm-hmm. so we, we, don't, we don't see nothing wrong with tap water. Um, but getting back to the topic, um, we were just kind of talking about, you know, what how Austin's contribution to this podcast in general and how we're going to put a spin on it and, like, how our generation and, like, the generations that we were alive to see make an impact. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about those who impacted now and the impact that they're going to have on future generations and things that people are going to study and learn about and things like that in the future. So um, just real quickly right now, like what what y'all think about that? Like who right now made an impact? Who's making an impact now is somebody that y'all see down the line. Um, for me, I like like 100 years down the line, 25 years down the line, 50 years down the line. Who do y'all see? I'll just pop it off. I, I, I'm going to start with Brian. LeBron yeah, James. Brian. Man. Like now, on the court, of course, he's making his mark. He's in, inspiring the youth, um, you know, giving them dreams that they can believe in. But off the court, too, man, this man started a, a whole school. Uh, who knows where those same students will be if he didn't start that school and the impact that they all have because of what LeBron started. So, man, it, this is generational. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I think – Players and people with power, um, professional athletes are starting to realize that they have that type of power, and and they're using it in a positive way. So, I'm gonna say LeBron James, man. Yeah. You know, what else do you see? Uh, what else do you see LeBron doing with his his platform, like over the next? <laughs> Dude, I mean, as far as media company, um, the things that you know he's gonna drop on that. As far as black content and, and the stuff that he's gonna put out that may not have been put out if he didn't start the media company. Um, agency, the agency with Rich Paul, the things that he's doing, it's it's crazy, man, and the list goes on. Um, yeah, man, mm-hmm. it's Brian killing the game. I'm gonna piggyback on that as far as like, I mean, just even like as most recently, it's more than a vote. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he helped Absolutely. get a whole bunch of people registered to vote who previous didn't think they were even like qualified to be registered because of their history and their criminal background and all that. Mm-hmm. He got a lot of people uh, registered to vote, Activism. which helped turn this election. We got into that actually on the first episode as far as uh, getting Trump out of office. So um, he even made a mark on that as far as like how many votes he affected. We don't know the exact numbers on that, obviously. But um, with Brian, like he obviously he made, you know, the biggest impact. And if you want to look at LeBron as polarizing, people hated him when he went to Miami. Uh, people like us who were Laker fans. Um, I couldn't stand him. I, I never hated him, Couldn't. but I mean, we talked about this a little bit before. We hated, you know, his fans because his fans always hated on Kobe, and Kobe was our guy. Right. But um, nobody ever had any sort of like hate or anything for LeBron off the court mm. because he put it all on the line for what he believed in on and off the court. Uh, Kaepernick probably started that off, who's another figure who I think is going to go down in the history books as far as, like, making change and putting mm-hmm. everything on the line. He's the blueprint for that. Um, but just getting back to LeBron, we're going to get more in the cap. Yeah. Um, but just, like, getting back to LeBron, he, you know, he he used – if there's anybody in NBA history who used his platform 
as far as like who's like one of the biggest stars who's ever like been in sports. Mm -hmm. He he's used his platform to make you know things better for the black community. It reminds um, me of uh, I think uh, there was an interview with Malcolm X, and you had Bill Russell on one side of him and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to the other side, and it just makes me happy uh, when players like that know the type of power they have, and and they you know commit to the cause and to. To their skin, their skin color, you know, our culture. I think it's dope, man. And uh, LeBron's, or uh, they paved the way for Bron, and Bron is taking mm -hmm. and running with it. So, um, yeah. yeah, man, that's that's my guy. I think you know, I'm years a, down the line, he's gonna be remembered for more than basketball. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go with Nip Nipsey Hustle. Yeah. I know he's not here with us, R. P. Nip, to Nip. But um, my nigga. you know, I, I know we all watch his interviews, and he's big on ownership. And I think right now we're in a in a time where us brothers, you know, black people, we're we're um, we're trying to own whatever it is that we do. So as far as like the music industry goes, like, you know, I know there's a bunch of artists who get involved in these 360 deals who don't have any control over, you know, their art. Um, and Nip was big on ownership, like owning everything that you do, making sure that, you know, you control the things that you can control. Um, so yeah, I think people are gonna talk about that for for years, you know, as long as music is created. And not even just music, just anything in general, any business that you're trying to get started, like just own it. Um, and I think all of his interviews and everything that he said, everything that he stood on is going to last. So Nipsey Hustle for sure. Nipsey, yeah, for real. And I mean, not I guess I'll piggyback yeah. off of that too a little bit. Just like Nipsey has had like a huge influence like on me, period. Just like his yeah. mindset, how he carries himself, how he conducts himself. Um, he's just he's just a legendary figure. I definitely think he gonna be talked about, but like that even like kind of like a conversation we ain't even had yet mm. um, that I want to have with y'all off the record, obviously, but um, just kind of like some of the things that he believed in, what he stood for. Mm -hmm. um, I think the way he moved is a great blueprint for a lot of people, like in Black history. Like mm -hmm. that's how we should move. That's like right. don't yeah. let mm -hmm. don't let the um, the institutions or what he said, racist institutions. I forget what song that is exactly, but he had spoke about racist institutions. Don't let them dictate how we move. Right. Um, there may be situations like even with this podcast where we may be offered like opportunities to be mm -hmm. put on the global scale, but it's going to be something that we will have to give up yeah, in right. order to you know reach that status. And like I said, I want to have that convo off the record as far as like what moves you want to make. But as far as like my thinking goes, um, a lot of my influence on my mindset on how we want to go forward with this is based on the moves that he made. Right. So, I think it's, it's, it's dope that he was able to keep it in the community, too. He didn't see any outside, yeah. you know, group of people try to, I guess, gentrify the, the area that he grew up in. He um he opened up a store down there. He he was mainly in, right you know, Kershaw and Slauson. Um, and, and like Lance said, ownership is everything. So... He's able to pass down everything that he owned to his children, mm -hmm. and the process goes on instead of somebody from an outside group buying, buying the hood, re renovating it, moving everybody out. The the same system that's been going on for years, and I think that's what's dope too about Nip. And even like with his untimely demise and how you know how he ended up getting killed, which was from somebody in his own community, he still like even like him knowing. There's an interview where he like he spoke about. Like the risks of staying in his own hood, where something like that could happen to him, mm -hmm. he still was like, "Man, I don't like whatever happens to me is is gonna be like what it is." But this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold it down for the people who love me here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show them the way, um, even if you know my life is gonna be taken for it. Mm -hmm. right, like right. obviously, you know, I'm sure he didn't want to go out how he wanted to go out, but he even got a lyric. Um, I'm trying to think of the song. What did he say? He said. Um, the legend, what do you say? It'll come back to me in a second. But uh, yeah, man, Nip, like whether uh, he's he's gonna be talked about. Like as y'all saw, like he like as far as like where he made it in his rap career, it like as dope as he was to us, paled in comparison to his impact on the world. Oh, like exactly. period. Like off the mic, niggas wasn't really up on Nip as far as rap was concerned. Like as far as like as. Where he should have been and right. where he was. I still as, got from homies his rap perspective. Throwing disrespect at his name as far as rap is going. 
like That's they crazy. don't understand like this it's a marathon with nip and where he was where he got to and then where he was going to take it if he was still here exactly like i'm still like pissed off that we missing out on his music like that he would have put out because right. i watch like we all watched a lot of his interviews and i know where he was like gonna take it like he was about to go crazy with this music shit mm-hmm. y'all yeah. heard the song with him and jay-z Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. We yeah, actually heard yeah, yeah. It last week. It's dope. And what what's crazy about that is I remember like hearing that verse. Like I could listen to him and be like, "Yo, that's that's 2013 Nip. That's like Crenshaw right. era Nip. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I know that." And then I went and I happened like a he couple says, days ago. I looked at an interview. And I was like, "Yeah, he recorded in 2013, mm-hmm. which yeah, is when Crenshaw that. dropped." Like I mm-hmm. I could mm-hmm. hear like like I could hear in his voice like what era he's talking from. Yeah, just like knowing like his music and all that, but. Yeah, he was. He was. He's always gonna be like somebody. Even people who ain't really like hip on his life and stuff, mm-hmm. they gonna be able to see like people reference him in the moves that they make. Mm-hmm. Real uh, niggas know, man. Yeah, like real the real niggas. niggas know. And he, it's a reason why somebody like a Jay Z gravitated to him so right. much and right. bought a hundred copies Snoop. of Crenshaw and exactly. hundred dollars a pop. It supported his movement like that because. They saw what he had. Like, he was just different. And I'm telling you, bro, like, like it, I, I was look, looking forward to Victory Lap five, six years before a drop. I was just waiting for him to drop that. And then, like, I'm waiting for the next one. I'm Man, saying, everybody like, was waiting. Yeah. <laughs> I was looking for interviews and grind. all that. So, Man, R.I.P. Nip Hustle the Great. Yeah. Uh, R.I.P. Definitely going to be um, remembered in our world and, you know, worlds way beyond us just because of the impact he made. Facts. Mm-hmm. He's a legend. What, and again, these are just people we think. We're not saying these are the most influential. Right. The people that will be remembered the most. Exactly. The most, you know, and that kind of like, I'm going to segue to Jordan because we had a convo a few days ago about, like, you know, something that, that Malcolm X said. So I was gonna let Austin go first, but I can go. We can go ahead since you uh, segue over here. So yeah, uh, last week me and uh, what was it earlier this week? I guess however you wanna call it. Me and we was talking in the car, and Malcolm X said a quote. I'm you know paraphrase for the most part because I don't have it verbatim. But basically you're talking about how you know what I'm saying you know later down the line what's gonna happen in America is you're gonna start seeing like celebrities and stuff like that that's gonna be start becoming our black leaders. The ones who, you know, the youth and, and our generation is going to be the ones that follow behind as opposed to like the Malcolm X's, Martin Luther King's, the Marcus Garvey's, the, mm-hmm. you know, and all those people of the world. But at the same time, what I was talking to my brother about it was, you know what I'm saying, their fight was a lot different mm-hmm. from what ours is. You know what I'm saying? They're fighting for civil rights. They're fighting for the right to vote, for the right to, you know, sit where they want on the bus, for the right, you know what I'm saying, to, to drink at the same water fountains, to, to right. use the same bathroom. You know what I'm saying? Like, their fight, you know, granted, you know, we reap the benefits of their fight nowadays. Our fight is a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Where we're looking for, you know, more equality, you know, just, you know, equal justice you know when it comes to how the police treat us and how the government treats us and and stuff like that so it's like you know things are a little bit different nowadays whereas like i don't necessarily not what malcolm x said because he wasn't wrong at all but it's just the times are different yeah you know what i'm saying Facts. and it's like you know and granted i don't think he could have seen or foreseen how life would have changed from back in the 1950s, 40s, 50s, 60s to now. You know what I'm saying? Where now you have black people have a little bit more ownership in their voice. Mm-hmm. In what they in what they able to say, you know, what I'm saying thanks to social media and thanks to, you know, the positions that they've been able to get to, you know, they have a voice. And you know, Barack Obama, perfect example. He's going to go down in history, you know, black history. Big time. First black president, Michelle Obama, first uh, first black first lady, of course. You know what I'm saying? Like they they have platforms where their voice means something. Where you know, back in those days, you know, we didn't have a voice that meant something to America, not just to black people, but to America as a whole. So now that we've kind of gotten to this point in, in, in society where, you know, black people more so have more of a voice and a say so in our communities and in the community of America, you, we look to like our celebrities who have those platforms to really kind of, I'm not going to say speak for us, but at least, you know, saying to speak to our plight and speak to our struggles to, you know, what I'm saying to help elevate us to get to, you know, different, different feats. So this is where I'll throw in, like, you know, your Barack Obamas. You can throw in your Jay-Zs. You can throw in, you know, you can throw in your Raphael Warnocks, you know what I'm saying, who just got, you know, elected senator in Georgia, you know what I'm saying, black senator, you know Stacey what I'm saying? Abrams. Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams, who's out here fighting the good fight, especially after how she got shafted two years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just, just seeing that type progression 
like you know what I'm saying? Like if you're talking about who who deserves to be looked at, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all all brought up celebrities and you know, rightfully so. I'm I, I'm purposely trying to go somewhere else with it. Like I was just telling mom not even a couple hours ago, um, we're talking about the COVID vaccine, who's gonna take the COVID vaccine. And the lead scientist for the Moderna version of the COVID vaccine, the lead scientist is a black woman. Mm. Dr. Corb I don't know how to pronounce her last name, Corbett, Corbet, is C O R B E T T. But she I know she's the lead scientist behind the Moderna vaccine. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And especially with how Times changed so drastically thanks to COVID-19. Like, all last year, niggas, you know, supposed to be in the house. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, people should be in the house and creating all these guidelines and people doing what they can to, you know, maintain safety and health amongst people and stuff like that. And the person who led the charge or is leading the charge into creating a vaccine to help cure all that so that we can get back to life as quote-unquote normal is a black woman. You know what I'm saying? So just little things like that. She's just somebody that needs to be celebrated. You know, you have a, a black president over at NBC. You have, you know, if you're looking at more, not necessarily celebrity type figures, but more like, you know, presidential or, or executive, I guess, leaders and stuff like that. You have those people. Um, and I'll talk, you know, we, we'll talk, I'll bring up a couple more as we go down because I don't want to hog up all the time right now. But, you know, like from celebrities to executives to, to you know, uh, legislators, presidents, stuff like that. Like, you know, it, our scope has broadened so much over the last 40 years thanks mm -hmm. to the fight that our ancestors like MLK, Martin Luther King and the people that we named earlier mm -hmm. fought for us to be in these positions. You know, now's a good time as, you know, Drew and Austin were talking about earlier. You know, let's celebrate some of the people who... You know, who are now coming into, you know, providing a new type of history that, you know, our kids are going to be able to look up and, and, and study, hopefully, in, in, you know, in their schools or that we can teach them, you know, along the way. I think it's dope you, you brought up, quote unquote, the little guys, because we live in a society where we're always on our screens, some type of screen, phone, TV, looking at celebrities. As you said, we, we name celebrities because that's mostly of what we see. Mm -hmm. So we expect, you know, what we see the most to do something, but... Like what you said, it's the people behind closed doors, the the people that work for the CDC's crane, the vaccine, people who are doing the little things that, you know, we also should give credit to. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what's up, man. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 No, I ain't got something. I I just learned something from what Jordan just said. So yeah, I appreciate I that. What was her name again? Mm -hmm. uh, Corbett. C-O-R-B-E-T-T -T is her last name. Her first name, I don't want to butcher, so I'm not going to. It starts with a K, I think. Shout but. out to you, Corbett. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> Shots. That was good. That was timely. That was timely. We're getting yeah. improvement Dr. on Dr. that. Dr. Corbett is a lead scientist that uh to, to develop the Moderna uh, vaccine for COVID nineteen. Okay. Yes. So shout out to her. Good looking. You, you're definitely going down in history, and people should definitely study and and revere you. But is is forward. is the vaccine is it credible? I mean, we're not. That's, that's, this is so before we right? should I take my applause back? <laughs> this ain't the episode. <laughs> this ain't. We don't know how, what's gonna happen. This, really. this, ain't, this ain't the episode for that, but. Even, we're, we're, we can't get credit if it's the, regardless <laughs> of if it is or isn't. Let's let, let's put it let's put it this way. Regardless if it is or isn't, right now there are people who uh -huh. are in dire need of a vaccine, especially those with pre-existing conditions, who are elderly, who are around family members, who have to work to to support their families and stuff like that. They need this vaccine to just for their living. First of all, second of all, even if the vaccine make you know a year down the line it comes up with some weird side effects that don't work whatever the case may be the fact of the matter is there's a black woman who is actually helping to lead the charge to find a vaccine in the first okay, place there you which go. if you know yeah. 40 years ago they she wouldn't been in this position to do it yeah absolutely so right. that's that's more so where i'm coming from and not not the the end result of what she's doing but the fact that she is in charge of actually leading the charge to do it Jordan well, said she well, what it don't matter say? if she turned people into turtles what matters <laughs> is <laughs> What matters is that she. Okay. Now, what, what I will say, like about what Jordan just said, like he said, forty years ago, she wouldn't have been allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think that's the case. She probably would have been allowed to do it, but she probably wouldn't. She wouldn't have got, yeah, she got, got for no credit for it. She wouldn't have got credit for it. Yeah, I was thinking so. Like, she barely getting credit for it. That's now. what I think. But uh, go ahead, Austin. What, what you, you know what, man? Think? I had some people. <clears throat> Y'all took them all, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sitting here thinking. I'm like, man, like the the primary people that come to my mind are. Um, like entertainers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Um, and and what makes me think, and this is a good discussion, is I I think that the reason why we're only able to 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 recall these people um, at first thought is because that's the industry that we had the most access to early on. You know what I'm saying? Like we pioneered. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, and it continues, but we pioneered um, pretty much like the rap, hip hop. 
industry. I mean, we pretty much lead the culture in this country as far as music and entertainment is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because Sports. it's it's dominated by black people who push black culture, um, which has become American culture. And it, it begs the question, if we as black people had access in politics and in business and in investment and everything for the past 100 years, would the progression of our people, okay, so obviously the progression of our people would look a lot different than it does now. Um, but I guess it's harder for me to say what the next 50, 75, 100 years, what the black role model is going to look like because we're still getting more access to a lot of these areas that we've been denied for several, several hundreds of years. I mean, I don't know, man. This is you. You might call me Dr. Umar Johnson if you want to. Mm -mm, nah, you brought but, my point. I mean, the way I see it, man, I Great feel point. like as as much as we've been marginalized in this country, um, for us to be in the position that we're in now as a race, over the next hundred, man, especially over two hundred years, man, I don't see why we ain't running the joint. Feel me? Here's the thing, Facts. and it's like I mentioned this uh, a while ago. I feel like I mentioned it to y'all even too. Um, and I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I feel like. When uh when I was in fourth grade, uh, we had this teacher. He was our history teacher, uh, Mr. Heath. Mr. Oh. Heath, shout hey, out shout out Mr. Mr. Heath. Heath, man. You taught me how to play chess. I'm new yep, to you. Yep, 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 that's how I learned to play chess. Fourth that's grade, Mr. Heath. He ain't teach me shit. <laughs> 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 The fuck? Why? <laughs> when I learned, I learned like in ninth grade or something, bro. <laughs> you got, but in any case, what I was going to say was, it's like, if I'm not mistaken, he was the one that taught me. It was like, uh, when it comes to history, history will always be told from the perspective of the winners. For sure. Now, of course, you know, back in, 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 in you know, an, I don't want to say ancient times because this is still, you know, within our parents' history. Feel me? But what I'm trying to say is, you know, back then, like, we didn't have a say so as far as telling our story. We could we aren't able to tell our history from our perspective and be able to teach it to the next generations mm -hmm. from that perspective. Instead, no, we got it, it got to be talking from the white person's perspective, mm -hmm. or you know, from the quote unquote winners. The establishment, and of course, as you know, we don't really learn about this stuff much in school at all. At all, they don't. You know, okay, yeah, hey, it's Black History Month, everybody. So we're gonna give you a quick fun fact here in homeroom. Hey, this is Rosa Parks. You know, she sat down in the front of the bus, instead of the back of the bus. I mean, I think they did a good job. You know what I'm saying? But it's like it, they, they did a good job introducing certain things. That's how much control they got. They did a good job teaching us <laughs> our history in this country. They didn't teach, do a good job of teaching us our power as a people. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, we didn't even learn about the history of this country. We was learning about Europe. In yeah. France, and, and the, I'm just I'm just talking about Black History Month in general. Like that's it's what like, brings up a good point, though. Um, not to cut anybody off. Nah, I think you better say what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, but like, so I was watching a, a podcast, uh, Earn Your Leisure podcast. Yep. Shout out to them. Um, Shout out Earn Your but Leisure. Y'all like, check them out like, too. Which I, which you just kind of mentioned, like it's a shift as far as like kind of like putting the culture out and like helping us gain power. You know, they they help educate our community and whoever tunes into them on like stocks and stuff like things like generational wealth will build yep. to put black people in economic positions. And they had uh, this dude on the podcast. I want to shout him out too. His name is, uh, he go by wall street trapper, wall street trapper. Uh, he got like a story, you know, he from New Orleans, uh, spent some time in jail, came out, rehabilitated and, uh, learned the stock market. He had found somebody, it was somebody in jail who put him up on game. He studied about it in jail, got out, and uh, learned the stock market, and you know he he doing well for himself right now after he he did some time for being on some street shit. But um, in the, in the episode that uh, Earn Your Leisure had with Wall Street Trapper on it, he was uh, he was talking about this uh, this analogy he had, um, kind of like in the jungle or whatever. Um, he he has spoke about lions, and it's kind of like speaks to like why we kind of asked the question like. As far as like, why do we learn things like, you know, U.S. history or algebra? Like, why do we learn stuff like that in school instead of things like taxes, learn how to do taxes properly, learn how to um, invest in the stock market and things like that? And he had got into this analogy about being in the jungle and, you know, kind of like how the lions are looked at as like the kings of the jungle or whatever. And obviously for a lion to be able to survive, you know, they got to eat, too. So... For somebody like their prey, something like a hyena, 
a lion's not going to tell uh, a hyena how to be able to run away because if a hyena figures out how they're going to run away, they think and the lion is like, how am I eat if I'm teaching them how to run away? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the structure of society that we living in now. Like the people, the, the wealthy, the rich, all that, they, they over here trying to like, they're not teaching us the game and we're not learning the game in school. We, we have to find the knowledge on our own to go back to that analogy. The lion is like, yo, if the hyena figured out how to run away on his own, like, he good, whatever. I'm going to still have enough prey to eat the rest of them. I mean, it's crazy, man, because this country was built off our backs. Facts. We, we're entertaining y'all. We make y'all money. And the fact that y'all still want us to hold us back and not necessarily feed us the information, knowing that we'll take it and run with it and improve and maybe even be better, it's just it's crazy, man. But, I mean, why? Why, why would they? Why would they? Why would they? They got to eat. They got to eat. Why would they? Not only do they have to eat, not only do they have to eat, but they have a generation of children to look after as well. You know what I'm saying? So We should be at, at the... Uh, they should be, they should be at that place where... We're past color, we're past racism, and we're one country. And, and not at all, man. It's, it's about they, man. they should be past that. I, I mean, at Here's the end the of the day, as a species, I don't care what species you are. At the end of the day, it's about survival, bro. It's about survival. And yeah, it's selfish. Obviously, we're not cut from that same cloth. I'm not finna jade somebody else for myself to, as being selfish. But man, that's that's just their history, bro. That's yeah. just their history. So yeah. I expect absolutely nothing less. But what's even in the, evening the playing field now is the access to information. It's just simply the access to information. But I don't care what nobody say, man. As much as I've seen us, man, we have taken stocks. We have taken real estate. We have taken politics. We have taken everything. And when we get our hands on it, bro, mm -hmm. when we get crazy. our hands on stuff, bro, we, we go crazy, bro. We lost that shit, shit bro. We go crazy. And they know that. And that's their and biggest, that, and that's, that's their biggest Honestly, fear. that's what it is, bro. They There's no that. reason. I mean, it makes sense, bro. You go all the way back to ancient civilizations. It makes sense why they're blowing noses off of statues, bro. They don't want them to know that was us. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I don't want them to know that was us. They mad they gave us a basketball. <laughs> I'm like, why did we get these? God damn it. Joe, Joe did you, was this your idea? <laughs> we, go, we went crazy. Facts. You feel me? So I wish they had a, a videotape of the first time a black dude played basketball with a bunch of uh, white men. <laughs> oh. Baseball. Hey, I'm a segue. Negro League, bro. All that. It was in yeah. The Negro League was better than the major leagues. Come on, hey, I'm going to segue real quick, bro. Like, it's a reason, like, you know, I don't want to say no disrespect because it's probably a little disrespectful. But, like, talk, if, talk, if, talk. If, if you wasn't, if, if we talking about NBA shit, if it was before 1970, I wouldn't hear that shit. At bro. all. I don't care, bro. I do not want to hear that no shit. Talent in the, league. the Boston Celtics won them bullshit ass rings, nigga. <laughs> oh, man, it's. Niggas it's probably selling insurance in the summer, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't would hear nothing about that. Air, I do not care. Them <laughs> niggas, bruh. Yo, hey, you know that? <laughs> hey, fuck that shit, nigga. I'm sorry. I gotta get my shit off. I know we off topic, but I gotta get my shit off, bruh. You know that, you know that highlight of Bob Cousy? <laughs> Uh -huh. Oh, he yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. O
and you know all that. But man, that nigga played with niggas who like cut grass on the side. He did play well though. He played well. He played well. Wilt, and Wilt was, Wilt was probably the only other good player in the league at right. that time. Yeah. Like, exactly. I don't, don't want to hear nothing about the NBA hey, man, from hey, my Oscar, team. Oscar Robertson was up there, too. Man, I forget so all this. Okay. Everything, I mean, it was yeah, a progression. Like, we didn't even black people, but still. Like, I, everything. I get y'all saying. Like, but imagine if there was more black people. Oscar Robertson was hating on Steph not too long ago when Steph was getting his shit off. I heard him say something about Steph. I'm just kind of thinking in my head, like, yo, Steph would cook this nigga, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Cook. I look, like, bro, I'm just kind of thinking in my head, like, yo, Steph would cook this nigga, bro. I'm sorry. Like, and, you know, that that's just what it is. I'm, I'm getting Rookie off topic. Rookie Steph would cook Oscar I'm, Robinson I'm, in his prime. I'm, I'm, I'm getting off topic, and I'm, I'm I'm on my little soapbox, and Jordan sign over here. Oh, awesome. Steph would have cooked that nigga, bro. I do not care. Rookie I year? mean, it's part of evolution. Huh? Like, Rookie year And Steph. obviously, you yes. know, we don't get to where the game is now without the people before, so we appreciate their contributions and all that, yeah. but can't nobody say that, you know, the game isn't better now Facts. than where it was because Facts. them niggas was not. Bro, if you really like, if you really look at everything across the world, there is, uh, there is black culture installed in everything. Look at TikTok, bro. The only reason TikTok blew up is because they're doing dances that were pioneered and created by black people. Fact. Same That's thing with fact. Clubhouse. Clubhouse got a billion dollar valuation because it ain't nothing but black people people's. like Meek Mill yeah. on there arguing with other niggas about whatever. But black people yeah. are on there, right? Powering the platform. We, I don't know, man. We've been. I, I, I get it. I understand why we've been marginalized. I would marginalize us too, cause we, you know what I'm saying? We blow this shit up. We blow this stuff up. It segues kind of into, you know, the next Let's part of the topic. Nigga, what? Let's see, if, I, if I, if I was, ever since uh, they, they took us from Africa, bro, they just seen us as dollar signs, nigga. If I knew this, if and I knew black people's power, and I knew it threatened my establishment and my future, <laughs> future, future's children, yeah, yeah. They I'm stole the sure vibranium, I'm a red, bro. I'm gonna do some redlining. I'm gonna make sure you don't get no home loans. I'm gonna do all that. You man, feel yeah, me? yeah, I feel you. And that's why. We need to. I think it's crazy the just how much they evolve. Oh my bad, my bad, dog. It's all good. I was saying though, no, it's just crazy. Like you know, we get through slavery, they got the next obstacle for us. We get through that obstacle, Great they got point. some other shit, and it's just crazy just how how much that. It's always something. That's they put their effort towards that. Imagine they they put that effort towards actually trying to, I guess. Create a greater country for everyone. It's all good, that, It's all good because want. those obstacles, those obstacles made yes. us stronger. And, and it makes us and what we are. Imagine, are. like, ain't too, many, ain't too many more roadblocks. You feel me? Like, ain't yeah. too many more roadblocks in front of us. So yeah. it's it's about to be open. We, we getting out there to legislate. Jordan, you, you got nah, some I'm, shit I'm, to get no, off. No, I don't. It's not too much. I'm, I'm going to say, I am going to say, well, this right now, and I'll say a couple of things later, because I know what you're saying is is, is mostly in like lightheartedness and, and kind of jokey jokey. Yeah. But there are people who have that mindset. What mindset? Where it's like, hey, okay, I got up, I done made it, I done, you know, got to where yeah. I want to get. Here's some other black people who could mess up what the fuck I got going on. So I'm gonna keep them down so that I make sure my people are good, but that still kind of goes to the detriment of our Not entire just people that. society sure. itself. For Not sure. just that, but another thing that kind of like is a child of that type of thought process is those people when they have kids and they have all the advantages that they're not even aware of being advantages so they don't and they're able to come up and get to a certain level in life and then they're looking at the family who their parents marginalized and they're looking at them come up and seeing them not being as successful as them and they turn around and say I work I work my butt off to get to this position the they, hard. they don't understand where the generation before them right. had to come from to get they there they just reaping the benefits of what is the parents of the generation before them got them to without understanding the foundation. They don't understand that's the that's, that we have. And that's where that type of mindset can be dangerous. And yeah, so, many, so it's uh, like that's where Uncle Tom's come from. That's where Uncle Tom's, right. Uncle Tom's, the Tom off of uh, Boondocks. <laughs> that's where niggas like that come from, man. Right. Yeah, like it's stuff they don't like know that. that history. They don't know the history. They don't know the struggle that people who are marginalized come from. And I alluded to it probably a few episodes ago as far as like, you know, the, the, the hurdles that we face, which you just kind of spoke to about now as a black community, like the things that we have to go through, the black family in general, um, the positions that we're put in, the struggles that we're we're facing, the things that, you know, I mean, my favorite TV show right now is Snowfall. And Shit, that, that Wednesday. It's coming back soon. Facts. We watching it. But like, it, it kind of like speaks to, if you kind of look at it, like how the government set our communities up to for fail. Sure, for yeah. sure. And then they set our communities up to fail and then the communities they set up to succeed look at the communities that set up to fail like I just I work 
hard to get where I'm at. Why are they like he that? didn't work just as hard. Like so he he don't deserve to get to that point. Why are you a bum? Why are you in jail? Why are you Why stealing? Why you a deadbeat dad? Why are you doing this, that, and the third? Exactly. Without diving deep into the reasons. Black on black crime. Why are you guys it? killing each other? Right. Without even looking into the fact that people kill those who's closest in their vicinity. So why don't white crime is com- comparable to black on black crime? Well, why would they? If whatever. everybody got assets, if everybody comfortable with everybody you, happy, you ain't got, got a reason to be violent for. Exactly. You, you don't so, got to join yeah. no gang. But, but put, the shoe on, put the shoe on the other foot and let's see what happens. Exactly. They going to they gonna pout and complain. I have a question. Do y'all feel like Black people as a society put too much responsibility and onus on like our celebrities and on our other black political figures who may have gotten somewhere Not to speak much. on our behalf. Uh, no, that kind of like, like that kind of segues power into great the responsibility. Next topic. It kind of mm-hmm. segues into a little mm-hmm. bit um, from that like perspective. Be great. Do we put a lot, you know, on on those figures? Um, probably so. If we being honest, like, if, like, just think, like, let's say, you know, my nigga Lance, he raps, um, and let's say he blows and he becomes famous and stuff. Are you prepared to, you know, kind of, like, bring your community up with you? Like, is that something that you've thought about right now as far as, like, a responsibility that you'll have once you make it? Honestly, no. Exactly. And keep it a buck. And if we, we had that conversation, buck, too, I think. Yeah. Right, nobody thinks about that, you know, as they coming up. They just trying to get to where they trying to go. Right, and then once they get there, they they gonna figure it out. They gonna adjust the plane while it's in the air. Good mm-hmm. examples, like, NBA players. Exactly, right? Like, they just hooping. they so focused on the goal of trying to make it. They're not the sitting hood. here trying to figure out like they once they make it, they get all this money. They're not prepared for everybody who's gonna be asking them for bread. They're not prepared for people who are gonna be making sure they provide the wrong right responses after, you know, questions during interviews after a game. Right. Where they just ran around the court for forty eight minutes and they shoving the microphone right. in their face right after the game is over. Like they're not prepared for that. So yeah. I feel like I mean, to a certain extent, like like I said, with great power comes great responsibility. So if God blesses you with the amount of money, with the the, the stage that you're on, with the power I, f- I feel like in order to honor him, it's important for you to put on for your city, to put on for where you're from and your people and your culture. But are you adequately prepared to do that once you get exactly. there? I don't think nobody no. is. Like, nobody so, is. Like, so why, why isn't there <laughs> no class why, why isn't there something built in for somebody to like, okay, he about to make it, he about to make it, he about to make it. Let's structure something to get them prepared for what's coming that they don't see right now. Why isn't that built into our culture? I'm sure, I'm sure that is built in. With people in the league, I'm sure you yeah. get people like LeBron mentoring somebody like Zoe or Ingram about how to handle like situations like that. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm sure that's there. But at the end of the day, I think that uh, like the question Mentorship. Jordan asked, yeah, I think it's very um, individualistic. Like for me personally, I don't put a lot on celebrities to represent me and my views. Right. Like, I'm not looking for y'all to to speak up about what my concerns are, mm-hmm. nor do I fault you if you don't speak up on it. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me personally. From an individual perspective, I think we all agree. Absolutely. But from right. a, a like from if Cultural. we're talking about our culture, the community, I don't necessarily think that that's the case. I think you know we we look to people like that, and we see it like for instance, like with the NBA, like let's say somebody like Jason Tatum. He coming to the league like, yo, Kobe was my favorite player. Kobe was this to me. Kobe was that to me. Kobe was that to me. That automatically comes with a responsibility on Kobe's behalf to be able to kind of like fester that growth and mm-hmm. to look up to him. Even like Luca and LeBron, like I heard LeBron talk about, you know, Luca said that I was his favorite player. So seeing who he is and how he came into the league and all that, so on and so forth. Um, and with his talent, I'm not just going to be like, yo, Fuck this nigga. I don't mm-hmm. care what he came into the league talking about. I'm I'm doing me. I don't care what he thought. Like that's that's not even a natural human response to have. Right. Yeah, that's so, what KG did. Joe Kim knows. His, his. <laughs> well to me, I feel like KG it's was like a different a, breed. KG different. It's a, it should be a natural response for an athlete to want to pass on their legacy down to right. the next player to continue their legacy on their style of play. And that's what Kobe was about. What about like Exactly. I'm gonna let you I want you, you want to elaborate something. Go ahead. I do. Uh, y'all, y'all finish. I'm gonna come back. Oh, yeah. You stressed yeah. out? Yeah. I'm, I'm not stressed. I'm not stressed. It, it, I'm, Say I'm, it. Here's why I'm okay. Here's why. Talk I ask. your shit. So, 
and I know this isn't where Talking. y'all are coming from, but like this is just thinking of other people who kind of have like similar mindsets or look at like athletes, for example, because that's why I keep bringing up athletes. You know, they they want to get out, they want to make it, they want to you know make sure they do what they can to play basketball. You know, they have their idols, people idolize them, whatever the case may be. However, I, what I don't want to do is discredit them from a level of intellect that they may or may not have just because they chose to play basketball. Because at the end of the day, that doesn't mean that they aren't privy to the societal issues that we're going through today just because they decided to pick up a basketball. I'm not going to sit here and say that, you know, they're deciding to shut up and dribble or they, they're, on, they're only focused to dribble the basketball when they know that regardless if they get to this certain place or not, they, they, you know, they will may or may not have to assume a certain responsibility when it comes to the black community. We're not saying they're stupid. Yeah, For me, not I, I'm an athlete them. myself. I, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm an athlete myself and I'm, I'm fairly intelligent. But when I was playing football... The only thing that they thinking about at that moment is is making it, man. And that's what Sorry. it takes. Honestly, I don't mean to cut you off. That's what it takes. Like you gotta have that singular focus and drive right. to even get to that level. Now, you gotta and, worry and, about and what you can worry but about. What I'm, I'm, like, I'm not sitting here asking about like the Zion Williamson's or you know who you asking Trey about. Young. But like for example, you have like your LeBron Jameses who've okay. been in the league for a while. They, they you know LeBron has gotten to himself where he he is an ambassador for the NBA. He's an ambassador for us as a culture as well. So when people ask him certain questions about, you know, black culture and, and police brutality and whatever, like, people are going to listen to what he says. But Michael Jordan wouldn't worry about none of that shit when he was in the league. That and, nigga and, was and, like, and, Republicans and, buy sneakers too. He wouldn't worry about and, none of that and shit. I, and I was going to bring up a nigga like Kanye West. You have a nigga like him who, shit, 14, 15 years ago, he was famous for what? Getting on stage and talking about George Bush don't care about black people. Right. And he went and had a, they, everybody was uh, was big on, and that was right after Katrina. Right. So everybody was hype on him because it's like, hey, you spoke out for, you know, our people and, you know, the people who were suffering down there in New Orleans after, you know, because a lot of them was us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? And so, you, but then you look, turn around 14 years later, what this motherfucker doing over here? Over here, stopping with Trump, trying to you know get into a Republican ballot so he can run for president as a Republican and shit, or as well as an independent, independent. or whatever. But he, you know, what I'm saying, which you know, and who knows what his overall arching goal was, just trying to get into politics, whatever the case may be, because you know he 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 be on some nut shit sometimes, whatever. But what I'm saying is, is like even if you do at some point. Where it's like, okay, you assume responsibility for you know speaking for and, and upholding our culture or whatever. He's a he's a perfect example of a nigga that just got completely fucking lost. I mean, I get all that and I understand that, and that's that's kind of a different perspective than I think like what we're like kind of looking at. But that's why that, but that's exactly why I asked, do we feel like we put too much of an onus on people having to represent us as a people? Because Kanye West did nothing but what he felt was best for him selfishly. And as in, the, in an individual aspect, I don't you may or may not be mad so. at it. But when you say some stupid shit like, oh, slavery was a choice. I don't think that's us putting the onus on him. Like, at a certain point, like, you have a responsibility to be yeah, human, bro. Like, you're human. Shit. Like, I mean, you're human. So, at the end of the day, your baseline is going to be, like, on some human shit. So, I think what Kanye did was, like, his, I guess, whatever path or whatever he was on is... His shit, like he, he was, outlier, bro. He was like I think I, his, his he was on some like outlier shit, and you can call it selfish, you can call it whatever, but like I don't think that's something that we can kind of like if we were studying like the cases on like okay, you put black men in a pot, you know, and as far as like a pot of celebrity and energy, whatever, and you're studying like their progression as far as like okay. How are they doing in their field? What are they doing to uplift their community? What are they doing? Kanye is an outlier. You throw that shit out. You're not even. I don't him. think Kanye is a good example at all. Right, he's he, an outlier. No, I don't think so. Either. You don't use him, but you he, throw but him out. He's still an example of sorts. He, he's but like, somebody we look at and we're like, nah. I like, put it like this. Like, yeah, we got to get out of just a selfish mind. State of mind. I don't know. Just like these some group. Like we got to put that's, stuff on people. That's who our are society. On that, we gotta, we gotta, I guess, put pressure on people who are on that pedestal to make change. Because if you're not on that pedestal to a certain extent, you can't provide the same impact as they can. So, Furthermore, what's what's best for the greater good? What's best for everybody instead of yourself? Lake has a great point about putting pressure on people because that's typically what we would do. That's what we do to our elected officials, and in in some sense, man, we have given these people social capital. You know what I'm saying? We've given them influence. So in exchange for that influence, we want something in return. Not that I'm going to DM you and be like, hey, LeBron, you know what I'm saying? I need you to speak up on this issue. But in exchange for my approval and me putting you on this platform, it would be dope if you represented the issues that I, you know what I'm saying? It's like a difference in that. All, 
They like to thank fans all the time. Think without without my fans, I wouldn't be here. How you, how you gonna thank us? I don't want to thank you. Don't do some nut ass shit that you the shit that Kanye be doing. I think a great example is Jay Z. Jay Z is actually a good example because Jay Z is vocal, but he's not like Kanye, like crazy with it. Nor does he waver. He and his wife have done so many things for shout out Beyonce. Yeah, yeah, shout Beyonce. out Beyonce, my, like shout his out. wife. My bad. Shout I should really be saying Beyonce and her husband. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jay Z uh, and his wife. <laughs> hey man, the two of them, man, both of them really are a good example, man. Both of them have gotten elevated to certain points, man. They post bail for people. They have donated to Houston during this, um, the the snowstorm. The snowstorm. Yeah, yeah. Man, they they put on for black people, man. Um, Kaepernick they, they just gave three million to Kaepernick. somebody. I think. Kaepernick. Uh, but basically, the point is like. It's hard to say, do we put an onus on all of the celebrities? I don't think we put an onus on them to stand up for us until they put themselves in a position where they're they, saying they that they advocate yeah. for us. Like, we're not asking you to do it until you put yourself in the position. Mm, I like you know that. what I'm saying? I like, like I'm, not, I'm not looking at Josh Hart <laughs> <laughs> off the New Orleans Pelicans saying, hey, Josh Hart, you're not speaking up. Like, nah, man, but if, 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 um, you know what I'm saying? LeBron get on there and he's talking about Black Lives Matter. Then obviously you've put yourself in a position where you're a proponent of the culture. And now from this point forward, I'm going to have expectations of you. And that, to that point, when people do like that, that, they know what that comes with. Exactly. So I like that. I, I, that's, that's a great, great point. I agree with that. So I like, I like that. So basically, once you once you yeah, once you try to grab out. the helm, we're gonna we're gonna expect you to uphold this. And yeah. You like, put your hands on it in the first Absolutely. place. Absolutely. And like I w- I would expect other people to do the same thing for me. You know what I'm saying? And I think like, where I was coming from is like like first. Example, like you brought up you being an athlete. Like, you know, if you was coming up, you decide, okay, you, you get to the league, you know, rookie or whatever. If somebody were to still approach you and ask you about, hey, how do you feel about George Floyd's situation or, or, or whatever the case may be, Ahmaud Arbery or Breonna Taylor, you know, something like that, to example. Like, knowing you, like I said, you're an intelligent individual. So, I, you know, me knowing you, I know, you know, the type of stance that you will take and all that stuff. Right. But sometimes, you know what I'm saying, like, it is not just you. I mean, some of the shit is just human shit. Though. At the end of the day, some of the shit is just family. human shit. Like, we have a natural reaction when we see stuff like my Arbery, like George Floyd. Yeah. Like, like these people who are put on their pedestals, they have a platform, they have the money, they have you know people's glory, whatever. Like, they're all the people look access. at people look at them like you know they're these otherworldly figures. But at the end of the day, they're human just like we are. Right. So and you judge a human based on how they react to certain situations. And like, if we see some things and you on that pedestal. And you you not having a natural human reaction like I think uh, Lil Wayne and Lil Wayne you know somebody who was my favorite rapper at a point in time like high school years all that like you you see you see stuff happen and people ask him like what his reaction is to it it's like man that shit ain't got nothing to do with me like Black Lives Matter they ain't got shit to do with me same like, thing with Young Thug like that that type of shit like you a human at the end of the day you a black man so like. How you like if like if the only perspective you could look at it from is from the perspective of how it directly relates to you, then you doing this human shit wrong. But at the same time, Period. you got sons and daughters. You got sons, and, and you got daughters <laughs> that that could have happened to. But exactly. if it's not directly related to you, and you, you can't, you know, nigga. you can't feel for that, then you just I don't. You do like I said, you are doing this human shit wrong. And that's why I would never look to anyone like Lil Wayne or Young Thug and say, "What are you doing for Black Lives Matter?" Like I ain't got no questions. Exactly. They already like, told us. Yeah, like you already put that out there. Like I ain't got no that's questions for you. I have right. no expectations for you, nor do I have expectations for anybody who has not put themselves in the position to be a spokesperson for Black Lives. Black progress, black anything. Like if I think it's important for all black families um, to condition their kids to know what their history is and to know about their culture. So um, when they do get in the place of whenever or if they're on a higher pedestal, they know how to act. Mm-hmm. They know how to respond to certain situations. And it's, it's coming straight from them. It's genuine because that's how they were taught. Yeah. Right. right. So okay. you're not just sticking up for the culture because you have to, but... It's innate. It's innate. It's it's in you. You feel me? So. And so to kind of just wrap, I guess wrap it up in a nice little bow. The reason why I was kind of asking those questions is if you were to take some of those mindsets, some of those like just the things that we were just talking about now for today's day and age, take it back to the 1950s and the 1960s. How far do you think like the civil rights movements and, and those type things that they were fighting for then, how far would they have gotten? Because the biggest thing that they needed at those times was unity. 
amongst, right. the, amongst the people to really get as far as they went. And as you can see now, you know, you have people, especially, you know, in higher places that may have dis dissenting opinions about, you know, like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm about me and mine. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, I'm about, you know, the, you know, what we got going on. I want us to get nothing wrong with either one of those. However, when it gets to a point where it's like, you know, shit got to change. Shit got to happen. Normally, a unified front will always and forever make more of a statement and more of an impact than it will have in a few people here, a few people there trying to band together. But you have the centers over here. So the, the, the true opponents of who we're trying to fight can look at us and say, well, if they're not even completely, you know what I'm saying, together themselves, what, what, what responsibility do we have? And that's to really the first argument that they have. And and black exactly. black crime. Y'all yeah, killing each other. And, this and, is, and that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And this get is at. where I want to like piggyback on that. And I'm not trying to like take a break. No, you get that's exactly what I'm trying to say. And all that. But like, I think a perfect example is that, like, you know, people say now, like, you know, we can't get shit done because, like, we don't want to stick together as a community. And I think the perfect, uh, the perfect example of that is in 2016 when Colin Kaepernick decided mm -hmm. to kneel for the flag, yeah, no, and I, it wasn't really nobody fucking with him on that front. Yeah, like he would do it, and you had people. Um, I know Dak Prescott for one specifically that I remember talking about. Oh no, nah, you tripping? We got to stand for the flag. Um, it's it's several others as well. He's one I remember. I, I'm trying to remember the others, but matter of fact, Cam Newton, one of them said he was tripping for not standing for the flag and all that. Like, like I don't understand. Man. I don't understand how anybody could have noticed Cap sitting down. And watch the interview after the game where somebody finally peeped in and asked him what he was sitting down for. Because he was sitting down before he was mm -hmm, kneeling. He was sitting mm -hmm. down on the bench. And what's crazy about that whole situation was he he was sitting down and he talked to this. Uh, he was a white man, a veteran in the Army, and had a conversation with him. He was like, I think it will be a more respectful gesture if you kneel. Coming from somebody in the U.S. Army who defended the country and, you know, the whole nine with that. How somebody could have seen that situation, even like us as a community as a whole, and not, you know, stood behind him when he made that move. I do. Like, it's a, it's, he put it's a, his life, he put his livelihood on the line, and he hasn't got his livelihood back <laughs> since that moment. It's but a he's a legend forever speaking to somebody who's going to be speaking to. Absolutely. He, like, for him putting his, his career on the line that he hasn't even gotten back, um, I don't care whether he would have gotten back or not. Like, he... The, the impact that he made, he set all this shit off Facts. by doing that alone. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, we couldn't get, you know, people and others in the NFL to kind of like stand by him. I don't know about the and NFL, but us, you know, D2 football, it's a lot of uh, black colleges. Um, dude, man. Y'all was playing ball during that time. We, man, we, we were, were taking on them knees. taking the knees. Every yeah. team we played was yeah. taking knees. And, and it's, it's all about exposure. And right, technology and what's getting shown, and I didn't care what public sporting event I was going to. I never stood for the flag. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I wasn't standing anyway, honestly, before that. But once that happened, I made it a point not to. I remember um, when when the Rams went back to LA. I went to the first game um, in at, at uh, the the Coliseum at USC Raider game, and me and my pops we went and we. <laughs> We sat down. It wasn't a Raider game, nigga. No, so I'm a, I'm a, I said Raider game. Oh, Raider game. Oh, uh, yeah. Fuck them. <laughs> 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 but anyway, like, we went and, like, we sat. Like, I'm, like, and it's like, you can kind of feel the pressure around you. Like, and I think you that's sad for this anthem. And yeah. I was I was not standing. Like, honestly, it's the same thing as Cap, niggas bro. wearing masks these days, honestly. It was never that... If you want to keep it a buck, we ain't never really put our hands. Shit I remember, I think in high school, I started pledging allegiance. Yeah, I did I, too. I, I'm not about to pledge my allegiance to no flag. Cause no, y'all don't have our backs, man. When you young, you don't really realize like the type of stuff that you're doing, so you just go along right. with what they talking about. But when right. you get older, it's like, yo, why the fuck am I pledging allegiance to a flag? Like, hey, Jordan brought up a really good point. Can you said that again. I thought that was a really I good said point. exactly what you said. Like what you was just talking about, as far as um, you know, wanting to kneel or and wanting not sit down for the for the pledge of allegiance or whatever, and people feeling uncomfortable because you're not standing up. It's like it's the exact same thing with people now not wearing their fucking mask out in public and people feeling offended if they're not wearing a mask because they're feeling like, oh, maybe you got COVID-19 or I feel like you're going to give me a disease or something like that. So it makes you feel uncomfortable where you feel like, okay, I got to put my mask on or I got to take my mask off around you so that you don't feel uncomfortable. Well, nigga, fuck you and your comfort. And I think that's that's really what a lot of that boils down to as far as the black people showing their support for uh, causes that, that help us is 
their level of comfort in situations where it might be pressure. Like a lot of people ain't built for that pressure where you the only person in the room kneeling and everyone else is standing. A lot of people ain't built to to actually still that take that to take that knee no matter how other people are looking at you. And then on top of that, you have these NFL players who were getting threatened with fines and suspension who have families to support and all kinds of other stuff. And I mean I, I I get it. Like, you know, we was all talking about it when it was happening. Like, man, these right. NFL players, y'all some punks for not kneeling. Someone got to feed their family. Yeah, I mean, they got, they got to feed their family. So I, I understand that there's yeah, that whole act. family. Like but cousins, my thing, I guess, but that's, all of that. that circles back to the point, though. If all, if every black player in the NFL stuck together, what are they going to do? Right. If every black player decides, 75% of the NFL is black. So if 75% of the NFL all decided to take a knee when Colin Kaepernick did, they don't have the power. We have the power. Ain't Better yet. Do. Let's go take it a step further. If there was no pressure from these owners to get us to stop kneeling in the first place for police, you know what I'm saying, uh, to end police brutality, then more people would be feel more comfortable kneeling and standing on, you know what I'm saying, whatever principle. But I guess, I guess my point is, like, I get that and the owners I guess we just used, we just used that, to the oppression. Like, we just, we don't understand our power sometimes. But yep. here's the thing, though, oftentimes. We're used to fight. It, it, we're, we're stuck with a fucked up choice. Exactly. The thing is, we have to choose to either be black or be American. But, and like, like I said. And no, the thing, but here's my point. It's, like it's, it's sort of like, like, Trying to be, try to uh, prevent from getting pulled over. Don't wear your do rag. Take your hoodie off. I understand those things, but why is that an issue in the first place? Like shit, me like, having my hair like this right now. It's an issue, right? I like we got to get out that mind frame. Like this is black. This is our culture. This is who we are. I mean, it's not. It's not the issue. Is not with us perceiving that as an issue. The issue is Dang. others perceiving that as an issue, and that's not something right. that we can't control. Right, and mm-hmm. that's an unfair position to be in. But at the same time. Like if we were to unify our power, ain't, it don't matter what they try to do. Like there ain't nothing they could do with us. And that's exactly like, why I posed that question earlier. Right, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I'm kind of like circling back to. If we were able to, like, if it's things we need to get done, we unify and shit. Like you saw what happened with the NBA when the NBA Facts. shut down back in like September or whatever. When they was like, yo, I don't give a fuck what type of playoffs is going on. We not playing. Let's get shit done. Mm -hmm. And they turned around and they got shit done. They got back playing. And they made real change based on unifying because they realized how much power they had and they product and what they was able to do. So, like, we got it. Sometimes we we could do a better job of, like, understanding our power and being Mm -hmm. able to stick together Mm -hmm. and get behind one another when we're standing for something that is bigger than us. Yeah. Like Kaepernick did when he sat down and then ultimately ended up taking a knee. Yeah. I think, and that's what's the beautiful thing about this day and age that we're in now is as opposed to having to, you know what I'm saying, rely on... You know what I'm saying? Like, I guess the bigger figures, you know, like your Malcolm X's, MLK's and stuff like that to, you know, kind of lead that charge. And, you know, people would hear about it, you know, days, weeks, months down the line because, you know, it wasn't news wasn't instantaneous as it is now. Right. You know, first of all. And then second of all, they didn't have the voice. They didn't have the, you know, the, the, the mechanisms to actually speak out and, and be heard. We have that now. Right. Social media has changed everything oh man everything if it's has used correctly i'll say that if it's used correctly social media has changed everything like we're able to connect with and speak to people miles and miles away from us in a blink of an eye now if, if when it comes to you know what i'm saying actually getting people on a unified front or on a like mindset it's not as hard as it was years and years ago like and on top of that we all have equal say we all have our own ways of expressing our voice and, and of contributing And that's where I feel like black history moving forward, we'll be teaching it to, you know, to our kids and, you know, they teach their kids and stuff like that. We can sit there and tell them, hey, you know, in our day, we were able, you know, whether we were completely hurt or not, we still had the opportunity and we had the the means to express our opinions and to raise our voice at something. You know what I'm saying? When, you know, even coming down to, you know, uh, protesting for police brutality out in the cities and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, they tried to shut us down with violence and all that stuff, even though they didn't do that on January 6th with them storming the Capitol. But that's a whole other story for another day. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Like the fact that, you know, a lot 
out of that was was led through social media. Yeah. Hey, y'all, we all going to link up here. Let's all meet up and do this. Boom. Blink of an eye. Mm. Done. I was a part of a group me. You know what I I'm saying? I would get the time and place every day. You feel what I'm saying? Was like, show up. The fact that we ha- we're we able to, we have these means to do it now, imagine what it's going to be in the next 10 years. Next that's what I'm saying. Right. Like That's like, what I'm saying, bro. Like, like, it ain't... That's, that's to me is, is the importance of black history right now. It's, like we're, it's, it's still ever changing. I don't even know if it's going to be like we in 100 years. It. Like the... The theme around black history is always about, like, our plight. You know what I'm saying? I think that the future black history is going to be about our launch, about our takeoff. You know what I'm saying? Like, right uh, now... Like, our... I mean... Like, just yeah, our gonna takeover. Be, be, yeah, our dominance. Yeah, like our dominance. Taking our dominance. Over slowly, that, that's really what it's going to be about. Burn. I feel like right now... It's and that's what they're scared of right now. And that's what they're trying to keep us from doing. Our oppressors are walking around. Let's talk to Super Smash Bros. They're walking around with 175% damage right now. <laughs> 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 One little hit. <laughs> feel me? No <laughs> lie, bro. Powerful, bro. bro and, and 175 percent damage. I'm about to come in with the Donkey Kong. This is where we at right now. <laughs> yeah. No <laughs> lie. We, oh, we winding up right oh, now. Yeah. The, uh, the, the sand is charged up. Charged. All it's gonna take is one more. And we already we already throwing that blow. It's we a riot, like bro. Panic, like we will get together to march or protest. You already they'll, know. They'll, they'll, they'll insert a little. They boarding up the windows, that, bro. No, 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 they'll send people in just to, to yeah. make more of a ruckus or a, more of a riot type Absolutely. atmosphere, right? Knock the windows down, and it's, it's like y'all really that scared of us when we get together, yeah. bro. They have they, man, they, they have assassinated us. our leaders for the past several years, bro. They can't do that shit no more. Decades. You can't period. do it no more. And and the Man. point, like, and kind of like to circle it back to Black History, is those before us paved the way for us being exactly. able to do what we're doing now. Exactly. So they fought a different fight that we fought, but we taking the baton and we doing what we can with it right now. We Specifically dominant, right now, because I even like kind of a conversation as far as like from I'm not gonna get too deep into it. I know we deep into the podcast, but. Uh, the conversation between like the what we're dealing with now and our previous generation generation like we we not we not standing for shit that they used to like just be like whatever about back in the day like just like as a, a culture as the world in general it, it's shit that you know people in the previous generation just kind of like turn their cheeks at that we like nah like we not dealing with that shit yeah. and you know we have conversations within our own family like about stuff like that facts straight up like it's it's certain things that you know the previous generation tolerated that we won't and that's not even like it's not a anything diss. it's not it's not a diss to that generation they did what they had to do to survive like you said earlier it's there's about things survival. that there's things that they tolerated that I won't. Right. <laughs> you feel me? That like, we didn't have to. That we don't have to. That we didn't yeah. have like, to. Y'all fought some fights that we do not have to, and we are like, but super and, and at certain stuff, it was just like, look, this is this is the way of the world, and we gon' like live with that. And then you yeah, know they try to teach teach us that, but at the same time, we oh. have eyes in our own generation where we look and it's like. Nah, we not putting up with that shit. I appreciate, you know, the advice that y'all gave us and how to go forward with this. But we going to do this a different way. We have, you know, we grew up in this generation. I mean, y'all here and but y'all y'all wasn't where we were at this time right now. So we have a better understanding of it than y'all do. And that's no disrespect because we wouldn't have got to this point without y'all. Right. And the same for like in the past, like no matter like where you look at it, 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 it was it was building blocks that we taken to get to this point. Now we at a point where it's like, yo, like black culture, black people, we know that, you know, our voices, our opinions, our thought processes, the steps that we take in, they matter. Like we know that. Like and then I don't care who takes offense to it as far as, like, the Black Lives Matter. Like, people trying to say all lives matter and all that. Like, we matter. And it don't matter how much y'all try to make us seem like we don't. We do. And it's the proof is in the pudding in our culture. And we're not, we not standing for that shit no more. We on the front lines ready to ride for this shit. Absolutely. And this ain't no so, anti-white, anti-anything rhetoric. This is straight like... Pro-us. Pro it's, it's pro us. Pro we, us. We realize our power. I don't care if you, you know what I'm saying. Way. I don't think we realize our power the way that we should. Though. I don't think we fully no. realize our power. That's no, where no, the yeah. next generation is going to come no, in. Exactly. Right. You know what I'm the saying? next generation is going to be at 100%. That's also on us in our generation to make sure that our the next generation knows and and weaponizes that properly. Exactly. Right, right. right. And we gonna get to a point where we're not worried about whether we wearing a do-rag in a car, whether we're not worried about how we wear our hair. Like, I'm not and worried about worried, it now. I mean, we're not worried about it now, but there's consequences for us not worrying right. about it now still to this day. That's like, like, 
I don't even know if I would have got the job that I got if I went into the interview with the way I'm wearing my hair now. But right now, I'm at a stage where it's like, yo, I don't, I'm going to do me, bro. Like, y'all going to accept me for who I am. That's a fact. I'm going to get quality work done. And I'm already in the door. So y'all got to deal with me. Fact. You feel me? Period. Shoot. So we going to get to a stage where Energy. You know, they got to accept us for who we are. If niggas want to be tatted from the wrist up, from oh, yeah. the hand, from oh, yeah. the middle finger all the <laughs> way up, like... Y'all gonna have to accept that. That's our culture. That's, That's our how culture. we rocking. That's how we riding. That's the Black history that we making in 2021 going forward. Feel me? You mean being accepted be for scared. us in all of our glory, don't, right? Don't be scared. Uh, fuck the dumb shit. <laughs> that's what it is, and I mean that's just you know. That's that's how we rock it. Me personally, I don't wear, I don't have tattoos. It's just me personally. I don't want it. But I don't. I, I'm not about to discriminate. I'm not about to look at nobody in no type of way. I'm not about to tell you you can't get this job. I'm not about to tell you nothing because of anything like that. It's about your acumen. It's about how you carry yourself. It's about how you move. It's about your production. As far as like a job, as far as who you dealing with, as far as life in general. Like we not judging off of somebody's personal preferences. Like that's 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 what we're trying to get to with this black history shit. And anytime we have equal access, opportunity and resources, we kill shit. Exactly. Every time, bro. Period. Every time. You can say what you want about Obama and his policies. He was the most graceful president to be up in that office. And Michelle Obama was the greatest vice president you know what I'm saying? In the country of... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm bad. First lady. <laughs> she might we as well have been a vice president. I'm thinking about Kamala. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, man, yeah. the greatest first lady in the history of this country. Speaking of, she needs to be honored. First, Absolutely. Honored. First Kamala. black Indian vice president. Like, you know what I'm saying? Kamala like, we're out here. I, I got you, Kamala. My bad, my bad. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Basically, what we're trying to tell y'all... Michelle Obama... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Run down the list, late. Cool. Michelle down the list. Obama. No, 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 that's it. That's it for me. Right. Basically, I think to to sum everything up, I'm not closing by the way. No, you good. At least my own personal thoughts, and I've been thinking this for quite some time now, um, is that we, you know, what I'm saying, black people in this country, we have been marginalized for far too long. And this was the past 400 years. We have overcome slavery. We have overcome segregation, Jim Crow, redlining, cr- uh, planting crack cocaine in our hoods. Um, all these Economics. things that, that our, our oppressors tried to do to stop us. We, we are still here. Nick. We are still. St- <laughs> I'm still here. I'm, I'm still, still standing <laughs> to, this <day. laughs> to, to this day. Bruh, to this day. We are day. still here. Um and y'all got to deal with us. What y'all, what, what, what the world is seeing from our community, from our culture, over the past ten years is just, it's just the beginning, bro. It's just the beginning, man. I swear to God, it's just the beginning. I'm excited. I'm excited, man, for the next. You know what I'm saying? Man, I it. think so too. And it's not even just about like you know the movements. We we about to like shift the culture, whether it comes to. Um, you know, yeah. y'all seeing the protesting that we doing when shit happens to us that we not fucking with. Um, whether it's what you doing as far as like changing the health and like the habits that we have in our community, um, we 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 going for it all, bro. And it ain't Absolutely. just like hey. we we going for it. Like y'all y'all see the like this ain't just about to be a movement behind black business. This is about to be a lifestyle. Mm, I know it's like you know four hundred people talk oh. about it's gonna be trending. All nah, this this is about to be what we do. Exactly, like, we, we see in the light. And we're going to pass it down for generations. And, you know, we willing to, I don't want to speak for all y'all. I'm willing to sacrifice myself, 100%. period, to be I, able I, to, I, to set us up for the future. And I plan on being here for a long time. So y'all going to be hearing about me regardless. But long, that, long that's time. just what we on, man. Like, we, we, we not settling for less. Like, y'all did that with our previous generations and things that they had to deal with. They it's fought dead, that nah. fight for us so we wouldn't have to. Mm-hmm. And right now we at the point where we not tolerating. Not just we don't have to. We not tolerating that. Y'all gonna we ain't skating. Y'all gonna see us. It's almost a spit in the face no to what our ancestors had to fight for, for for them trying to, you know what I'm saying, still trying to keep us down for so long. You I'm know saying, what I'm saying? Bro. Yeah, we're we supposed to build on their shoulders. They looking like, man, why y'all taking this shit, man? Oh, we right. If we was fighting, y'all fight too. No, for, these 400 years is up, man. It's our time. Motherfucker. So, hey, y'all talk y'all shit this episode, Last, thing, I want to say one more talk. thing. Last thing, and this, I guess, I don't know. This is a good note to end on, but um, there, there are several points of our plight where we would not have been able to progress without the help of people outside of like the race. You know what I'm saying? Like, you okay, you yeah, look yeah. at the march on the um, Edmund Pettus Bridge. You see white people uh, locking right. arms with black people. Right. Um, personally, our kids go to school. Uh, the owner of the school, the people that work at the school, the community, man, they are all. 
it's crazy. They're white, but they're absolutely pro black, man. They got hey. the blackout stuff on their Instagrams. They got Black Lives Matter flags in their yards. Like, they are with it. Um, I was and marching with a few white people. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Like, it's like, and it's no like shot at our community and all that in general, but you know, it's, it's a lot of people I know who got the opportunities they got because of white people who are fighting for us alongside us. Absolutely. And it, it may be times where like they're viewing people in our community who's not even having that same fight for us that exactly. those type yeah, of people are having exactly. for us. Yeah. And that's just me keeping it a buck. That's like that's, 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 that's how it is. So like Austin Spoke. said, those. You know, those who are not black, but they're still, you know, with our cause, with our community and understand that that's what it's going to take to make the world a better place. Pl- better place. We got you. We got you. <laughs> better place. We definitely appreciate y'all, man. And when yeah. we take over the world, we're going to look out for y'all. Yeah, we bring y'all the, with us. We the nice, only, man. The only <laughs> thing I ever ask is, like I said, if y'all going to have that same energy publicly, just have it privately. You know what I'm saying? They don't. That's that. Or if you have it privately, have it publicly. Either way, all I'm saying is like you know, they they have people, like Austin was saying, like you know, he has people that he talks to. You know, they're probably back here. They got the you know the blackout on Instagram. Cool, that's great. But what I'm worried about sometimes is okay when it comes down to okay, a day people see that may oppose your views that you know are with ours, and you get checked on them for whatever. However, okay, you might lose your job, or they, you, whatever the case, you might get shunned from your community. Whatever the case may be, where are you gonna stand when the fire's on your feet? Yeah, that, that is man. my thing. It's, it's good right now, you know. It sounds good when you're talking to us, but what I want to see is okay when it when it's really time to to show that, show it then. Another piggyback off of that, like a good point with that is for for those like y'all outside of our community, but standing with our community, I'm sure y'all see a lot of stuff and people like who are comfortable talking to you. Ways that they not comfortable talking to in ways that they not comfortable talking to us. And like they they'll be turn around talking to you like that either. Right, they shouldn't be comfortable talking with you like that either. If it's something that you believe in and that you well, stand you're not on, like, them. like you're different. It's not even like that too. <laughs> that that, that as that, well. That's, that's, that's but like boy, you know, that. like if they if you know they turn it around and they they want to support people that oppress us. Like we want y'all to like check them like for us because they not they not bold enough to say it to us. They just not like that's. Period. Point blank. Um, I've I've seen a lot of different things like where, I mean, just even like personal, like even like us as black people, we're naturally more comfortable talking to other black people, you know, about things that we go through, things that we see, so on and so forth. So everything naturally, that's gonna go for white people talking to white people, Mexicans talking to Mexicans down the line. It's a, so it's a culture thing. If it's something that I mean, right is right, wrong is wrong. Stand thing, right? on your Just ten toes. To try to be a part of the group. Stand on your right. Stand on your ten toes. And if you can't if you don't feel comfortable standing on your ten toes in that moment, just pull out your phone, record it, and send it to one of us <laughs> so we can see it. Matter of fact, yeah, that, that might be even better. Get their asses fired. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Get their asses fired, nigga. <laughs> oh fuck. Uh, camera issues again, yeah. but we're gonna keep riding this out. Man. Matter of fact, we about to close this yeah, shit. Close this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, old you. But nah, um, I mean, y'all get what we all shit. Black history, black vibes, black love. That's 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 where we going now. From now and going forward, you know, we 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 gonna keep mashing on the gas when it comes to to everything black. Um, got love for all people. Exactly, and we're going to keep, you know, we we black pushing people. and promoting all black businesses. Shout out Black Marketplace once again. Black Friday Marketplace. Black Friday, Friday, black Friday, Friday Marketplace. Black Friday Marketplace. My wife is starting, like, a shout lovely, out. like, initiative to, you know, get these black businesses popping. So, yep. shout out to that once again. Shout out to you know, building generational health. Doing some already great business. Already no. I got some new. I got some new stuff coming, man. I'm going to show y'all. It's going to be hot. Yeah, man. We yeah. might have a podcast about that. It's going to be hot. But yeah, man. We, we appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Closing out Black History Month, but celebrating Black History every day. You already know. As we always do. And we out. Appreciate y'all tuning in. It's the Mac 5, the bros. You know what it is. I'm Six. throwing up the peace sign like the camera's still yeah, on camera, and it's not, but we out. I know you won't believe me if I told you I'm a star in the making. Get more support from unfamiliar faces. No, I don't strive to be famous, but I'm not blocking any blessings. If that shit is up for offer, then you know I'ma take it. It got a few stipulations about my soul. I never give it to Satan at all. Money really be the reason that some of you fall. Doing shit just for abundance, but fuck what y'all been doing, cause I know my time is coming. I've been running and running. I came this far and I'm not seeing any reason it's stopping. Niggas.